What's up everybody? So we're back on the shop and in this episode we're going to wrap up the D-Guard Bolo Knife. Now, this is a little bit of a longer episode because there's a lot that goes into a D-Guard on a knife and especially for this one being my first D-Guard that I've ever put on a knife. There were some things I had to think through and I tried to put a lot of that information in this episode. Could I have made it a five minute episode? Probably, but you wouldn't have really learned anything from it. So hopefully y'all enjoy this video. We're gonna jump into it and we're gonna get this thing knocked out. So with this, come back. I know that I kind of want to bring it because of course this section of my hand is smaller than this section. I kind of want to bring it down in the front a little bit and then bring it up a little bit higher going towards the back so that it sweeps towards the back and then comes back up and it's just going to end at the top of the handle there. So bring it down, sweep it up, bring it back. Workbench is basically just a big sketch pad. So something kind of like this. So something like that right there. That is the, the goal here. I think that that would look really good on there. Now remember, again, the handle that I'm using, or the handle that I'm gonna make, isn't gonna be just a cylinder like this. It's actually gonna taper towards the front and the back. So it's gonna have a, kind of to where it has a swell in the center here. It's going to taper here, taper there. I think it's going to look a lot better and fit the hand real well. And then on top of that, there's going to be a little piece of copper. My goal, again, <laughs> is that there's going to be a little piece of copper on the front here. So that means I need to change this up just a little bit. So, a little piece of copper right there, piece of copper off the back side here, and then the tang is going to be peened over. Then we'll have the handle material on the inside there. That is the goal. We're going to see if I can make that. So I was talking to one of the 
co-host on the Knives Templar podcast and one of our chat groups that we have. And uh, his name is Jason Fry. Awesome knife maker. He, uh, I showed him this design here and told them that I was getting ready to start working on it, forging it. And he said, you know what you should do? You should make a paper template or something out of cardstock of the actual guard so you had an idea of what to do. So you had like a reference. So I thought that was genius and I did that out of an uncrustable box, not sponsored. Went ahead and cut it out. Of course, cut a hole through it for the tang. And on, cut a hole for where it's going to be peened over on the back side. And that gives me an idea for one, what it's going to look like, how it's actually going to fit over my hand right there, and gives me the length that I need to be able to make this thing happen. This was an absolute awesome idea, and I definitely wanted to share that with y'all. Because if y'all are going to do something like this, that makes life way easier. Being able to actually see what you're going to go for on here is really, really, really cool. So that is the goal for this D-Guard right there. All I'm going to do now is, of course, take this off. And I know how much material I'm going to need and everything like that so that is going to be absolutely awesome and I've got something to give me an idea of where I need to bend things and do all of that stuff so that is just super smart figured I'd show that to y'all this is about how much space I need for that front area for the guard That gives me all the room I need for the guard. So here's the deal. This is what I'm going to do. For one, this is mild steel, so I do not need to uh, worry about it getting it some perfect heat or something like that. I could probably forge all of this exactly as it is, but I'm not going to do that. So the goal here is I am going to put a little bit of a forging texture on the whole entire guard but I'm going to be tapering the guard back to the back. I know that I need a total I've got it marked on here that whole entire cutout that I did so I know how much length I need so I'm going to forge it and taper it to thinner back to here as we go ahead and come back so I want it to be full thickness at the front where it's actually the guard and then when it wraps around the butt of the handle, I want it to thin back to there. So it's just got a gradual taper. So we're going to go ahead, rounding side of the hammer, forge this down a little bit, then we're going to flatten it. We're going to forge a little bit up here, give that a little bit of a texture, and then we're going to square everything back out. just a hair
Now we can go ahead and mark out where the tain's going to sit on this guard. Give us some little lines on here. And that'll give us an idea of where the tang's gonna be. There you go. And then we can go ahead and set it up for the back as well. So that's good there. Center it up. Okay, so now that we have those marked, all we gotta do is go ahead, mark the center. And what I'm gonna do, because this isn't perfect, like the, the sides aren't perfectly flat all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and mark it by eye. That looks like pretty much a center. And then what we're going to end up doing is once we get it drilled both sides and get it on here, I'll then go around and I'll look at it all the way down the tang there, cut off the excess here, do a little center line, and I'll end up grinding all the excess off both sides until it's nice and even. I've got plenty of material here, so we'll be able to adjust by grinding off any excess. You'll see what I'm talking about as we do it. So we got a 3 16 drill bit right here. It's just smaller than the tang, so it's to be perfect for doing the hole drilling for this. We're going to start with the, the back side, so it's just a single hole, and then we're going to go to the front where we have to drill four holes. Just using round file here and we're just going to open it up where it needs to be opened up at. And I've got the top and bottom of that tang rounded so I don't really need to square off the shoulders on the top and bottom at all. That's pretty close right there. Okay, so now I just need to flip it over and open up that back side. And I'm going to use a square file to do this. So now that I have the front and the back marked, I can go ahead and start drilling the holes. I know that that tang goes straight down through the center of this, so I'm going to drill the back hole first. We're just going to go and try and get it as straight as possible on here. Now all we're going to do is come in and just connect those holes.
the back side a little bit more. So now we've got a few lines marked on here. We've got our center line, top and bottom, so we know exactly where our center is. And then I've got a simple little profile on here. You can see that little round circle drawn in pencil on there. So we're just gonna knock those edges off. I've got that on the front and the back. So we've got our lines, and then on the bottom, where your fingers are going to go over, I've got another line marked right here. So there's going to be a little swell on the finger side. It's going to be smooth on the back side. So basically, it's just going to have a little facet that comes through here. And we're going to be creating that whenever we start rounding. It's going to be subtle. It's not going to be too crazy. It's just going to be enough to, to stand out.
Well, I just kind of lucked out and the tang for this file here actually matched up to the, the tang for the knife. So I was able to just put it on here and I'll be able to turn it over, sand on it. Same thing, kind of keep it in one position. That'd be pretty easy. We're just going to use the stropping method. Come across here and blend in the lines with some 220 grit. And then we'll go up to 400 after that, maybe even 600. I don't know just yet. We want to try and smooth everything. So whenever we're coming up here, we're only going to be going up to the little facet that we have right here, that little crest. We, uh, we don't want to wash that out. We want to make it nice and sharp. So we're just going to come up to it. So sand up to it, sand up to it, and then not go over it and risk messing it up. So I've got a couple of things marked out here. I've got a little radius marked out here at the top of the front. That's the front going towards the blade. So I can round that off. And then I've got the actual back side of the handle marked on here so that I can start profiling it. Now I'm not gonna bring it all the way down to the size of the handle. It's gonna be uh, close to it, but slightly proud maybe <laughs> that, that's where i'm going right now but as i start playing with it i might make it step down just a hair i might make it slightly bigger i don't know we're just going to get rid of a bulk of the material and then just kind of play with it until we figure out exactly what size we want that's the goal here <laughs> So now we're going to go ahead, use a little ball peen, come in here, forge a little texture all the way around it. We want to do this with the steel cold because we don't want it to deform the steel a whole lot. It might move a little bit, but we're really just trying to get a texture. We're not trying to move a bunch of steel. So basically we're trying to achieve that little ooh, right there that little forge texture all the way around it that's going to look really good whenever we go through and make this thing dark and then come across it with a scotch bright pad all the little peaks are going to get uh, scuffed off and all the dark spots are going to stay down low and the little divots so that's what we're going to do all the way around. It's going to leave a nice texture, I think, when it's all said and done. At least I hope so. Now, one of the things to remember about this step is we need to keep it as clean as possible on here because this will actually be visible on the actual uh, Ricasso area. So the Ricasso of the blade is going to run into this. So you need to make sure this is nice and tight because any gapping will end up showing in the final product. So we don't want to file too far. We want to keep it, you know, just taking a little bit off at a time.
So I went ahead and made a little template out of cardstock, just like I did for the guard itself. And just refine the profile a little bit so that it would be the shape that I want it to be. And then I just transferred it over to the little material that we're going to use the copper here. That way I can go ahead and just cut that out and call it good. The next thing I need to do is do the one for the back side here. Do the little template on it. And then I'll have both profiles ready to go. Now we're going to use a little 4440 instant gun blue to make this dark. Just wipe it on, coat everything, and it's going to make it all nice and dark. I'm actually just going to take this off of here. Probably suggest putting this in like a spray bottle or something like that. Probably make it a lot easier to coat it. I will definitely be putting this in a spray bottle next time. Once you get the finish that you want on this, you're going to want to take it inside and you're going to want to run it under hot water to neutralize it. So that's what I'm about to go do right now. So now that we have this darkened, we're going to go through, hit it with some good old CLP, and then we're going to hit it with a scotch bright pad. just slightly we don't want to go too crazy with the scotch bright pad you'll see the finish that we're going to get when it's all said and done So now you can see all of the texture around the outside of it. Makes all the forging texture all stand out all the way through it. All right, so if you're gonna do this peened over tang method, you wanna make sure that you only leave about an eighth of an inch of extra tang so that you don't have to forge a ton down or peen a ton down. Make sure it's tight in your vise. Then gentle taps. And we're just gonna mushroom this out and it's gonna give me a mechanical bond on top of the actual epoxy bond. One of the reasons why I did the forged texture, the ball peen texture on this copper piece, because if I hit it, it doesn't matter.
bad. I wonder if I can get through it. That's a little bitty guy here. There you go. <laughs> That works. <laughs> well guys, that is a D-Guard Bolo. Now, it's a very big knife. There's no, no hide in the fact that this is a massive knife. Uh, you could probably call it a short sword if you wanted to, but that's not technically a sword. It is a knife. It's just a really big knife. So, some of the things that I love about this is I'm really happy that I did the D guard on this because I think that it fits this overall blade amazingly. I really like the copper medallions that we have up front there. I think that that is a just the perfect fit for this particular build. I'm happy that we did the pinged over tang. I think that turned out real cool. And then of course our forge finish on the actual D guard all the way around there. And then on the sides, I just think it all turned out real awesome. I love this wood. Got that from Don Watson. He's one of the guys on the, the podcast with me. And it's just absolutely awesome. Stabilized Spalti Pecan. Look at the grain on that. Absolutely beautiful. Now, some of the things that I had to think through with this was how it was going to fit my hand to make sure that I didn't actually bring it too close to my knuckles so that if I did hit something with this, it wasn't going to smash my knuckles into it and so that it was comfortable. So I had to think through the length of the handle so I didn't get any weird hot spots. You know, this just fits your hand. So if you have to thrust this into something, if someone's, you're, you know, you're fighting with it and it glances off the blade and hits your knuckles, it's not gonna slice anything up so it's wide enough for that. I mean, I don't know. How many people that are getting into knife fights with something like this because if somebody comes at you with a pocket knife and you pull this out there's a good chance they're going to run away i mean i would uh but this thing turned out really cool i think it's really awesome it's super sharp and i really love some of the other things about this so this is 5160 so anytime you can get something that resembles a hamon on it is actually pretty cool now of course the reason why that goes down this blade, you can see it right here, all the way down, is because we differentially harden this, which means, you know, we I wouldn't say we dif, dif, or differentially hardened it, we blued back the spine. So it's a version of differential hardening. We quenched it, blued back the spine, softened the spine, and that's what gave it that hamon, which again, doesn't really happen on 5160. You know, your 10 series still, Hamones, awesome. You got a bunch of stuff, 2063. Those create beautiful Hamones. But on something like this, it's kind of cool that you were able to, or that I was able to get a Hamone out of it whenever I mean, you don't typically get that. But love this. Love the D-Guard. I'm really interested to know what y'all think about this. Do y'all like the copper accents? Do you think I went just enough or do you think I went overboard with this particular one? Or would you love it and would you want to actually swing this thing and have fun with it? Because I know that I definitely did. Anytime I get to slice stuff up, that's just absolutely awesome. But guys, there you go. There's our D-Guard Bolo. Now for the next episode that we're going to be working on, we are going to be working on a type of a blacksmith knife. It's a blacksmith knife slash integral bolster and slash quaken knife. I'm going to start forging that today and we'll see how that goes. So see y'all on Tuesday. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. Like, subscribe. I'll catch y'all next time. Mm -hmm.